In Baldur's Gate 3 you can play as a sturdy dwarf, a tiefling harnessing infernal power, or a gold dragonborn in the pursuit of justice. There's all kinds of races in Baldur's Gate 3 for you to pick from, and today I'm going to be diving deep into the heart of the character creation process of the game. Hello everyone, my name is Dark Hero, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be ranking every playable race in Baldur's Gate 3, dissecting their strengths, weaknesses and unique benefits in a tier list format, so you know what is the best race for you to pick for your characters. Of course, keep in mind that while each race and sub-race does have its own unique benefits and attributes, they aren't as important in BG3 as they are in the pen and paper Dungeons & Dragons, where picking a certain race actually affects your ability score. And even if that were the case, BG3 isn't that difficult of a game, and the game itself allows you to have plenty of different customization options, so that regardless of whatever you pick, you can still have a fun time and create a very powerful character. So keep that in mind as we go throughout this video, and with that being said, let's get started. So starting off with the humans, they get an increased carrying capacity of 25%, one additional skill proficiency of their choice, and are proficient in light armor and shields, as well as spears, pikes, halberds and glaives. It's nothing outright bad, but there's also nothing that stands out here, so I'm going to say humans are a C-tier race. Up next are the elves, which come with proficiency in perception, and have advantage against charm, are immune to magical sleep, and of course have dark vision. They also come with proficiencies in short swords, long swords, short bows and long bows, but there are some differences between the sub-races. The High Elf comes with one Wizard Cantrip of your choice, and the Wood Elf comes with Stealth Proficiency as well as an increased 1.5 meters base speed. Overall, I think the increase in base speed can be very valuable. There's plenty of times when I try to get close to an enemy, but I'm just a few inches away from being able to reach them with a melee attack, and so I need to use a dash to get there, and in the case of the Wood Elf, I wouldn't have to do that. Plus, the Wizard Cantrips are quite good in my opinion, so I think the Elves are going into the A tier. Now the Tiefling, they come with Hellish Resistance, which is resistance to fire, and they also come with Dark Vision. Additionally, depending on the subclass, you gain access to a cantrip and later on, to different spells. For the Asmodeus Tiefling, you get Produce Flame, as well as Hellish Rebuke at level 3 and Darkness at level 5. For the Mephistopheles Tiefling, you get the Mage Hand cantrip, as well as the spells Burning Hands and Flame Blade. And finally, the Zariel Tiefling, you start with the Thaumaturgy Cantrip, and you also get Searing Smite as well as Branding Smite. These are all quite decent cantrips, and the spells that you end up getting are also quite good in my opinion. So you can pick any of these sub-races to complement the playstyle of your character, like for example if you want to have Mage Hand on a stealthy character without going Arcane Trickster. Plus, the fire resistance is situational, but it can also be a nice bonus, so I'm going to rank the Tieflings as a B-tier race. As for the Drow, they come with proficiency in rapiers, short swords and hand crossbows, and they are also proficient in perception. Much like with the Elves, they gain advantage against charm and are immune to magical sleep, with the added benefit that they get superior dark version that has a double range. Although there are no sub-race differences other than dialogue options, they also get Draw Magic, which will give them Fairy Fire as well as the Darkness spells at level 3 and 5. I would say that this is pretty much on par with a Tiefling. You don't get a lot of benefits out of picking the Drow, but gaining advantage against Charm and being immune to Magical Sleep can be quite nice, and the Superior Dark Vision can be very helpful, especially in some areas in Chapter 2. After that we have the Git Yankee, which are proficient in short swords, long swords and great swords as well as light armor and medium armor, and they also get astral knowledge which allows them to gain proficiency in all skills of a chosen ability, which is going to last until a long rest. As part of Geeth Yankee Psionics, they also gain the Cantrip Mage Hand, and at level 3 Enhanced Sleep, and at level 5 Misty Step, with the added benefit that the Mage Hand will be invisible. Overall, I think the Gith Yankee are a very good race. Being able to pick any skill in the game and decide to be proficient in it, each time you decide to go for a long rest can be very useful and allows you to be much more versatile and also lets you fill in some gaps depending on what sort of activities you're going to be in. 
The proficiencies you get are very good and also getting Misty Step for free is very very good. In my opinion the Gith Yankee go to the very top of A tier and are very very close to reaching the S tier. After that we have the Dwarves, which should be noted have a slower movement speed compared to the rest of the races. They are proficient with Battle Axes, Hand Axes, Light Hammers and War Hammers. And they also gain advantage and resistance against poison damage as well as dark vision. Now the gold wars feature is that their maximum hit points is going to be increased by one per level which can make you a bit more tanky. The shield dwarves come with medium and light armor proficiency and the dwegar come with superior dark vision as well as advantage on saving throws against illusions and against being charmed or paralyzed. And in addition to that they also get the spells enlarge and invisibility at level 3 and 5. I think the lack of base movement speed can be a big hindrance for the dwarves, especially if you're playing a melee character. And since the dwarves are only proficient in melee weapons, that is something that you really have to work with. I like that in particular the Dwegar just have so many resistances when coupled with the base dwarven resistance against poison, and also getting enlarged as well as invisibility can be very good, but also gaining that extra hit points from the gold dwarves can be a good bonus, especially at the beginning where you don't have as much HP and that is going to make the difference. So overall I would say that the dwarves are decent, although they do have that drawback of the movement speed, so I cannot place them higher than B tier. After that we have the Half Elf, which are proficient in spears, spikes, halberds and glaives as well as light armor and shields. Just like the other elves, they gain advantage against charm, are immune to magical sleep and have dark vision. Now here we have three different sub races. And the differences here are basically the same as the elf differences, with the high sub race gaining a cantrip from the wizard spell list and the wood half elf having extra movement speed and stealth proficiency. But here we also get the Drow Half Elf, which comes with standard movement speed and gives us access to Drow Magic, which is going to give us Fairy Fire and Darkness. Overall I'd say that it's not too bad, in fact I would say it's better than the Elves because you have more options, with the big highlight of course being the Wood Sub Race because of the extra movement speed. So just like with the Elf, it's going into A tier. And next on the list is the Halfling. Now the halflings, much like with the dwarves, come with a slow movement speed. That being said, they also come with lucky, being able to reroll on a 1 for an attack roll, ability check or a saving throw, which can be very useful. They also get brave, which gives you advantage against frightened enemies. With the lightfoot halfling having advantage on stealth checks, and the strongheart halfling having advantage and resistance against poison and poison damage. I think the Lightfoot Halfling can work as a very good rogue type character, as you get the advantage on stealth checks and also get lucky for whenever you get a bad hit. But I also feel like a slower movement speed is going to make a rogue's job a lot harder, and you may have to use dash or cunning action just to compensate for that. So in my opinion I'm going to place the Halflings in the C tier. But because Lucky is so good and Brave can also be very powerful, I think I'm still going to place the Halflings in the B tier. And after that we get the gnomes, which also come with a slower base speed. They gain access to gnome cunning, which gives you advantage on intelligence, wisdom and charisma saves, and all of them get dark vision. As for the sub races, the rock gnome gains history expertise, the forest gnome gains speak with animals, and the deep gnome gains advantage on stealth checks as well as superior dark vision. I feel like the gnomes offer a lot more options than the halfling in my opinion and gaining advantage on intelligence, wisdom and charisma saving throws can be very very good. Also getting the spell speak with animals for free allows you to have a lot more roleplay opportunities in the game and I think a lot of players are going to value that. And the advantage on stealth checks of the deep gnome can also be very good. Although I would also like to see this one get enlarged and invisibility, but maybe that's asking too much. So overall, I think I'm going to place the gnomes in the B tier. And after that, of course, we get the Dragonborn, whose benefits are going to depend on which draconic ancestry you decide to pick, with each of them offering a different elemental breath as well as a resistance to that element. Like for example, with the Gold Dragonborn, you gain Fire Breath as well as resistance to fire damage. With these breath attacks being a 2d6 of that element and being a 5 meter cone with different saving throws. 
Personally, I feel like this is more flavor than anything else. Although gaining an elemental breath from the very start can be very good. And if you know the game, you can prepare yourself ahead of time and pick an element which you're going to find more often than the others. Sadly, it doesn't offer much more. So as much as I like this race, I think I'm going to place the Dragonborn in the C tier. And the final race of the list is the Half Orc. Half Orcs come with standard movement speed and are proficient in intimidation. They also get Dark Vision and two very useful features in Relentless Endurance, which makes it so that whenever you reach 0 hit points, you will regain 1 HP instead of being downed. And this can happen once per long rest. In addition to that, you also gain Savage Attacks, which makes it so that whenever you land a critical hit with a melee weapon, your damage dice are tripled instead of doubled, which is absolutely insane. The amount of damage you can get out of this racial feature, if you're using a melee weapon of course, is absolutely nuts. And again, just being able to have that extra life can change the entire tide of battle and allows you to be a lot more aggressive and thus spending less actions on healing yourself. It's just a very strong and efficient character and in all honesty I think it stands out above all other races and so I'm going to place the half orcs as the S tier pick for the list. I didn't place any race in the D tier because frankly there is no bad race to play. All of them come with their benefits, although some do have a drawback. Let me know how you guys feel about this in the comment section below. Would you change any of these picks? For example, I could see a lot of people placing the halflings higher on the tier list because of lucky and brave. So let's talk about it in the comments. With that being said, as always, my name is Dark Hero and thank you very much for watching.